Huh? Listen, you didn't you didn't hurt your neck or your head, did you? I had I, I hurt my head, but I'm fine. I want to make sure you didn't damage your your C spine, your neck. Uh, I, I can move. <laughs> you feel everything? Anything tingling? No. <laughs> Nothing tingles. Well, no, no, you look dizzy though. I'm gonna take my helmet off. Yeah, do it. Let's do it carefully, okay? Careful. Let me see your helmet. See if it has any damage. Yeah, that's new. My leg hurt a little bit. Your leg hurts? Yeah, you blew your buckle. Have a seat, man. I'm gonna get you some water. Here's the scene of the crime. How are you feeling, buddy? Um, I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. My yep. neck hurts a little bit, but I, I think I survived this one. Yeah, heads on straight. I think so. Yeah. I mean, it was the same way as half an hour ago. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're looking a little dirtier than you were before. Yeah, I look cooler actually. You look cooler? Yeah, yeah. I look rugged. You look like you've been working in a coal mine. <laughs> Surviving his first real crash with little more than a mild concussion, a contused leg, and some dirt in his mouth, Diego remounted his dirty but otherwise undamaged Vosges. <laughs> Still struggling to clear the cobwebs and stubbornly refusing to concede either his gait or livestock harassing duties. But having already surrendered hope of reaching Rusfin in time to refuel, we took our time with Chad running sweep on our way back to Cameron for the night. It is raining like a mother effer. It's gonna be a wet day, eh? Yeah? That's what she said. The next morning, we awoke to rain, packed our bags, and made our way to the only fuel available on the southern half of the Chilean side of the island. Two days prior, this remote gas station located within the complex of a lumber mill, had run out of gas entirely, leaving a few unfortunate travelers stranded. Luckily for us, the gas truck arrived just in time, allowing us to fill our tanks and reserves prior to continuing south to the end of the road. Departing Rusfin, pushing past the remote outpost of Papawanako and Estancia Vicuña, we briefly sought shelter from the rain on the porch of the Caruquinca ranger station, until a brief break in the weather fooled us into getting back on the bikes. Contending with water-filled potholes, trucks, and switchback after muddy switchback, we ascended into the park as both the temperature and the visibility dropped until reaching Mirador Lago Deseado. Stopping briefly to take in the views and dump our fuel bladder. Did I time that perfectly or what? Look at that. Full tank, baby. We descended to the valley floor and the shores of the lake before contending with road construction and an endless series of switchbacks into the Dientes del Dragon and Cañadón German Jankowski, a breathtaking canyon when you can see it. Oh man, you can't see anything. Go, let's go down to the next switchback so we get a view.
Dismissing any illusion of clearing skies, we abandoned our perch on the pass and started the long descent into the canyon. Days like this, clad in cold, wet gear, riding to a destination no one cares about, just to turn around and do it all over again, aren't particularly fun. Especially considering Chad and I checked this particular end of the road off our list two years prior. But this ride was different. This wasn't about fun. Far from the bright lights and fanfare of Ushuaia, just on the other side of this lake, less than 75 kilometers away as the crow flies, this end of the road at Coleta Maria is symbolic. This isn't the picture people ride to the end of the world for. Most overlanders and moto travelers don't know and don't care where Coleta Maria is, and they don't have to. It doesn't have to matter to anyone else. It only has to matter to you. Because while Diego made it to the end of the road, his license plate almost didn't. Oh, fuck! <laughs> You've got a few loose screws, my friend. Traveling by motorcycle to remote locations, far from the conveniences of civilization, is often a miserable pursuit. But as Chad told Diego when we set off on this journey, if you're not comfortable being miserable, you're just going to be miserable. <laughs> 